Hey y'all, it's Matt Thomas here with MDE Outdoors. It's processing day here down in southwestern Pennsylvania. Had a successful season, got multiple does, nice buck tagged out yesterday. So today, <clears throat> after everything's kind of hung out, we're going to go ahead, got this all quartered out. Now we're going to debone this and get this ready for processing. So our intention today is um, I weighed everything out in the lugs, ended up with about 177 pounds of meat total. So we're looking at doing hot sausage, sweet sausage, straight ground, and then I'm going to do some trail bologna and some jalapeno summer sausage is the plan for, uh, for this set of deer. Uh, second season we're going to look at doing some, uh, some capicola hams and things like that. Um, we'll do butterfly chops and uh, some chip steaks and things like that for uh, breakfast type stuff. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, out of the, uh, the tenderloins and uh, the fillets. So we're going to get on this. Um, one of the things I like to do after I, after I harvest an animal and get it scun, scun out on a gambrel, um, I like to run over it with a, uh, with a small hand torch. Uh, super simple, great trick I picked up down at the butcher shop. Um, on the flip side of that, I like to do it again when I get the meat here. Uh, it's plenty cold enough today. It's hanging around 35 to 40 degrees here. So we like to take our piece of meat and just fire it up, give it a quick once over. That nips up any of the leftover hairs and residual stuff that might be on it before you really start getting in here and trimming. So. Just a nice quick clean up. If there's anything real uh, dry blood, anything like that, you want to get that taken care of. Uh, good sturdy cutting board solid deboning knife. Uh, I like the Flossner series. They seem to work real well. Have a waste basket there for your uh, your scrap and an empty clean lug for all your uh, your fresh ground stuff. So we'll get this trimmed up and uh, get ready to rock and roll here. So here's your hind quarter. Here's your hip joint here. And what you got here is your bones. So basically the bone structure you can kind of ch chase around a bit. So here's in essence, here's your sirloin tip here, uh, bottom round, and trim meat out of this. A lot of guys cut these for steaks, do bone in. We're doing all ground today, so deboning, pretty simple. Find your bone. You can hear them bones right there like that, okay? So, you wanna start up on the edge of the, edge of the femur, work it around that joint, and then follow the lines on the meat. Real simple, it's like a puzzle. Okay, so you can get in there and pull these sections of meat apart just like this. Now, the more you do this, the more skill you'll build and the better a home butcher you'll end up becoming. So, you can get in there, work around that knuckle like so. Work your way down and find that bone. And just chase that bone right right down to that joint everybody thinks uh these deer are kind of hard to deal with and and rough it, it doesn't take a lot uh, of knowledge base when you're doing these ground deer like this and then just trim up any of the stuff that you see on here just nip some of that off that stuff you don't want to eat i try to keep as much fat out of it because me personally i like pork trim add it into mine so Get this all cut and cleaned out. Watch these fat packs inside the meat here. This is stuff that I always try to remove. Okay. You can come in here and just work this with your hand. And you'll see how the muscle groups start to peel right apart. Okay. So get this popped off and then we'll clean this up and trim and trim it here later on. Try to peel any of the blood vessels, anything like that. And there is right here. All right, so we were talking about the, the uh, tri-tip in the top round here, bottom round. There is a gland right in there, lymph node, that you want to make sure you get cut out. Because if not, it's going to make for some na nasty deer meat. It gives you that wild taste. And anybody that tells you, they, oh, my deer is wild, that's why it's wild. It goes in the trash. Clean as much of this up as possible. 
a little bit of hand work. Like I said, it's like anything. Once you once you try it and you get rolling on it, it's not so bad. But just chase those bones around and get that meat cut down. Get it peeled off and then come in on the back side, watch your hands, watch your back cuts, and just angle down away from it. And you can chase that bone, that knuckle bone, right around and get in there. And there's a little bit of gristle to it, so you don't want to get that encapsulated into your cuts. And just You'll feel it with your knife, and then you can peel right away from it. Okay, so get down in here, peel, and you'll, you'll feel it break loose. It'll come off. You get these partially quartered out. So, you got your bone here. Come around and just run that knife right along that, that femur. And then when you come down, get into the knuckle portion and then just give yourself a cut right around it, like so. Then you can take your knife blade right down along the bone. You're going to make two cuts because this is all ground. We're not cutting this out for steaks. And all you got is a light little bit of trim work on this. And you're good. This is all trim here. So, like I said, nice chunks of meat. There's your joint. You can see how these work. Very little waste on them. If you see something you want to grab, go ahead and get some little bits and pieces off of it. If you left anything, if you made a fat cut on it, and then straight down to the to the scrap pile there. So you got one big giant piece of meat here. So you break it down by your muscle groups and peel this all out. Again, like I said, we're trying to trying to eliminate as much venison fat itself in this as possible. And we're gonna go ahead and trim that stuff out this was a nice nice fat deer well fed so try tip roast bottom round nice easy cleanup Nothing too difficult to work with here. It's just a matter of learning some of the cuts of meat. I always try to get as much of this sinew and tissue out as possible just because it makes for some, some chewier bits uh, when you're doing your grind. And then peel your, peel your pieces off and I like to cut them, make sure they're cleaned up and then cut them in about an uh, inch and a half to two inch chunks. We put them in our, uh, in our grinder and then go from there. So. All this sort of stuff. Just want to peel this off and then trim, trim, trim. Once you get rolling on it, now I'll butterfly these out. A lot of times, trim the ends that expose those tendons. Clean up a little bit, not a lot. The grinder will do a lot of the work. The plate will catch a lot of this, so you don't have a ton of trim. Usually, usually out of this type, this uh, amount of meat, we'll end up with. Um, you know, right around 150 pounds or so when it's all said and done of good high quality venison here that uh, we were able to harvest for the season. So, you know, everyone, uh, my family loves venison and we like to make a lot of different things out of it, but you know, ground meat is one of our, one of our primary staples. Uh, my children like to eat a lot of, a lot of breakfast sausage and things like that. And, uh, you know, just makes for good and you know where your meat's coming from because you harvested it and you know what you're putting in your freezer because you actually processed it yourself. Uh, it's something we've been doing for a lot of years. You know, over the years we've slowly invested in uh, better grinders. Uh, 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 my number one recommendation for doing any type of stuffing. Um, keep your eye out on, on sale for some things and get you a, uh, a 5 to 15 pound sausage stuffer depending on the amount of deer that you do. You can do it with the grinder, but it's very, very time consuming. Once you get your, your fat taken care of and ground out, we've got a uh, 25 pound mixer. We mix and then we use the lugs for the mixes and allow the meat to set up once we do the, do the curing setups for them. And then we'll come back several hours later, <coughs> excuse me, and 
can go ahead and start to process those various meats. <coughs> mm, excuse me. So, yeah, I worked uh, <coughs> I worked part time at a butcher shop a long time ago, and uh, one of those uh, one of those enduring traits that I learned was processing your own deer, and <coughs> I'd already basically done it anyway, just never at a commercial level, so. It was a nice easy transition to just continue on and I learned a lot working there. <clears throat> Getting those cuts of meat cleaned up. You want to make sure you take any type of blood clots or anything like that if you can see those. You want rid of that stuff. It's going to give you a foul taste to your meat. Any type of heavy gristly items or anything on that on that meat. You know, there's, <clears throat> there's a lot of processors. Clean stuff up and toss it all in there. I like to get, get rid of the, the less desirable pieces because we're trying to put out a high quality product for my family so <clears throat> like I said trimming this down into into cubes breaking this down pretty simple process doesn't take a whole lot of time or effort to get this in like I said this is all rough rough chop and chunk for everything ground now if you wanted to cut some uh, bottom round steaks or something like that that's a pretty simple process and we'll we'll touch on that really briefly here again give it a give it a quick clean and trim a lot of this stuff a lot of your trim if you're going to do steaks <coughs> can go right into your grind and building some good knife skills along the way helps when you get any of those type of tendon blood vessels or anything else out of here get this thing trimmed and cleaned up square yourself up so you could do a rolled roast out of this already took the tri top off of this and then your bottom round piece here like your London broil Cl finish cleaning this up and then you can true your edges and do that as well so if you wanted to cut steaks easiest way to to remember to do these steaks like I said, you want to want to trim these pieces of meat up as best as possible. So, as you're basically filleting the silver skin <clears throat> off of here, and a lot of this can go right to the grind with uh, with a quick cut. So, you can see, you can get all that and save all that trim, and then the rest of this, where the silver skin is and the fat, you can, you can get rid of that. And you trim and true that up a little bit get that taken care of trim your top roast here get a nice clean cut off of that right, so let's see yeah I like to fillet whatever I can off of it to help add to my trim for my grind it's all nice clean meat. <clears throat> no blood clots, if you see any dark spots, anything like that. You want to get rid of that sort of stuff. It's going to give, give an off flavor to your meat. So you can put all that sort of stuff in and it can get tossed. And then like I said, if you were uh, you were trimming out for a roast, you come in here, nice and clean. You can see that roast, how nice that looks. Come in, <clears throat> you could tie this up. Well, break. <laughs> you can tie that up and uh, go ahead and use it, or even packages package it as it is. One of the uh, one of the big things that uh, that you can do. Some guys like to cut jerky out of these, but I know some guys they also like to cut some different steaks. So you can come in here, and if you want to cut some cut you some one inch steaks, you can come right through big boneless steaks like that give yourself about one inch three quarters of an inch and there you go ready to ready to season marinade put on the grill whatever you need to do these are some gorgeous looking little steaks here if you wanted them if not you can cut these right up and go straight into your your trim pile use them like we're going to continue to do. If I'm trimming them and running them, I'll cut cross grain and then 
go ahead <clears throat> and just cube these up to go straight into the grinder. So not a uh, not a super hard task, but getting a getting a bone off of that, trimming a little bit, a little bit of this silver skin off. Nice gorgeous piece of meat. You make some fantastic burgers with this, or you can cut this up for stew meat as well. One of the things you can do, um, a lot of people like to do that. Uh, do some canning process as well. So you get into the next series of cuts here. I generally like to butterfly this out. It gives you a little more working room, and then you can break the two major muscle groups down out of this. And it allows you to just get in here and get some of that trim and get rid of it that you don't want to run through your grinder. You know, a lot of this uh, exterior exterior skin you want to get get rid of clean that up and then like I said you can cut these down and you can make some make some nice rolled roasts with these or go right ahead and just cube these out to run right into the grinder like that and then give yourself another pinch cut on them they'll be a little bit thick you want them three quarter to one inch pieces makes uh makes your grinding a whole lot easier same thing with this clean that up get those little fat caps off of there uh, the venison fat is not very much not like a uh a beef or a pork and you don't want all of that uh, fat that's where you get your wild gamey taste to it so like i said continue to cube these up roll right in and i mean we're we're about 15 minutes in from the start here and we got our first hind quarter done good sharp knife good steel and there's a lot of different videos out here on how to I'm just showing you some ways that I found that work quite well. Now for your main part of your roast. Like I said, you want to get the silver skin, you can see that best way I've found to do this is at this angle come in just get in there on the edge of that skin and I always leave a little tail because you're gonna cut into that cap and just work that knife down along there you're gonna get a nice thin fillet out of it that you can peel that excess meat off of if you want and this all scrap. Get these all cleaned up, cleaned out. Good little, good little chunks of meat all over these here. This is one of the more tender pieces of meat one of the inner muscle groups that you'll find and these make make great little little steaks little chip steaks like so kind of like the uh, one of the flat iron steaks almost like an inner tender inner inner tenderloin again we're gonna be grinding all this but do that and then you can come in trim this out a little bit up here Grinder, square that up. That's a tail. Cut clean. All right, now we've got our cap. So come in here like so. I like to fillet that right off. Just keep nice, even pressure down on your knife. Work that down in. See, nice and thin. 
darn near see through it. Now you have a beautifully trimmed piece and you can clean up a couple little areas that you might have missed. Those dry, that dried up stuff. And you're basically ready to go. So <clears throat> use these for Mississippi pot roast. Tide roast London broils. You can sear these up, clean them up a little bit, season them, slow cooker, or you can even smoke these if you want. Low and slow. Make you make you some really, really good good vittles here. So again, we're going in. Cut steaks out of them if you want. looking steaks cut your stew meat out of this whatever you need deers really versatile you just gotta gotta be creative and there's a ton of resources out there to maximize your meat and give you the uh, the best quality of cuts for your uh, particular eating habits so I hope you guys enjoyed a uh, little, little trim session here, and uh, I'm sure there'll be some uh, some more deer to come down the line. Like I said, we're going to be doing some uh, some summer sausage and bologna out of these, trail bologna out of these deer as well. So y'all take care. Again, Matt Thomas for MDE Outdoors. Remember, shoot straight and get your kids outdoors.